Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be doing the tier list for support for 1318. So as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton on the channel. Come by, check out the stream most nights, usually starting around 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, typically going until about 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We usually play two or three games, a little bit lighter uh, on the schedule than it used to be, but we're still out there most nights hanging out, so come on by. Um, welcome to talk about League, or if you enjoy Total War, or you play in, um, you know, just anything else that you've had a lot of fun with, or have questions about, come by, check it out. It's always a good time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in here. So I do apologize for missing out on the last few tier lists. I know um, I've been a little inconsistent with that. I'm going to try to get back to consistency here. Just had a bunch of other stuff going on. And um, anyways, it is what it is. Can't go back and change it, but we're going to try to, you know, stick on it from here, from here on out. I still do enjoy the game. Um, I do think it's, I do think there are interesting things going on. I just haven't uh, been around to it. So let's talk about sort of what's going on here and now. Um, so I am recording this video on Sunday, uh, a couple of days before the patch drops. I'm going to try to do this one a little bit earlier. Uh, there isn't a lot on this patch, I think, that is affecting support directly. There are, There's a little bit. So like Thresh has a little bit here. Senna has a little bit. Bard has a little bit. So there are a few that we're going to talk about, but... More so, this is trying to change a few outliers, um, especially in like top lane with like Trindomir, um and like J4 in the jungle. But all of that does affect kind of the ecosystem around certain supports. Um, so indirectly, it could affect supports. But <clears throat> let's, uh, well, I guess we can just mention what they're saying here and how it could. Uh, affect it. So Senna is going to 100% critical strike damage so if she does go for a crit build and I'm not honestly sure what a lot of people are picking on her um, these days let's just see if people are trying to do crit or not because I know she has all kinds of weird builds and frankly I don't see her that often in solo queue yeah people are still on kind of this lethality build um, this has been popular. I know there was like a tank ish kind of build running around for a little bit with like heart steel. Uh, Ghostblade apparently has a huge win rate here. Um, but yeah, most of these are going to be lethality type of builds. So I don't think the crit is going to matter that much in terms of what she's building. Now, obviously, do she does get some crit for free just based on her souls. Um, so it will be a buff either way, but she's not building like Infinity Edge or anything like that. So it's probably not going to be like a massive buff. Um, the AoE hits now count towards passive proc. Okay, so when something roots other people on the w then you get sort of your extra uh passive soul damage or whatever so minor buffs i don't think it's going to be a big difference i think she's still okay if you have good early game domination we'll talk to her when we get into the tier list but i don't think it's like that big of a deal thresh this one might be more significant because i feel like thresh is already like pretty good um in soul queue they did give him a few buffs over the last few patches um so his shield is going to two per soul. So you get extra shielding there, just automatically. You don't have to do any extra itemization. So, um, you know, if for example, you had 50 souls in the mid game, which is pretty easy to get to, I think by like 10 minutes or so. If you had like 50 souls, then instead of having 75 on the shield, you'd have 100 extra on the shield. And that definitely does add up over time, especially late game. You have like 100 souls. You know, you're talking like an extra 50 on your shield. Um, and I I think people had shifted over on Thresh to not maxing the W, but maybe people go back to W. Obviously, like Hook is your main max, but like what is your second one? And I know for a while there, people had been doing W, but I believe that was one of the nerfs back in the days like they increased the cooldown on it so yeah people and they like increase the damage on the e so yeah people are still maxing e so if that's the case the w is not going to be as impactful because the base shield's going to be so low like you're getting a little bit more out of it but i could imagine if they go back to a build with thresh where it's w max second and you can get away with doing something like lock it into redemption um, with any kind of plus healing and shielding off of something like Redemption that's good. Now, that does obviously make Thresh squishier if you do that. So that's kind of more like a backline, peeler 
type of thrash and just tossing out hooks to get it engaged, but you don't want to go in there and just like face tank everything. Um, so that'll be interesting. And I mean, Redemption does have the highest win rate of the items, a little bit of a lower sample size, but still respectable at 8,000 on this patch. So maybe that could be a possibility um, on the next patch. And then what else? Bard. Um, this that's a lot here this is going to be difficult to tell because it's so many changes all at once like bard's big problem is that he just has no scale on any items and i talked about this on stream the other day it's like the r and the e literally have zero ratios on them so it's no scaling whatsoever the w um is extremely weak as far as the scaling goes and then the q is like okay so it's just like the items just don't make a lot of sense on him he just kind of has to get some weird stuff like dead man's plate just to make him run around faster sometimes he'll go tankier so he can sit there and auto a little bit more so he can go something like frozen heart which is like it's okay but i feel like a lot of the armor items like big armor items just aren't that great especially for tanks right now you can still do things like knight's vow obviously you know zeke's doesn't trigger very well on him though um so i don't know he's just in a really odd spot in terms of both runes and itemization it's like what do you take as a rune on him yeah like he doesn't have enough consistent harassment to make airy really good aftershock you can't consistently trigger that so i, I guess it's just guardian right but um that's just the big problem with bard is he's just kind of like a really cool kit just sort of a, kind of an oddball in terms of runes and items um where he just gets almost no benefit out of a lot of those things, at least not to the same level that other supports do. He's just, he's so all in on these stacks. And just the premise of having to run around to collect these things also, it's like, it's dangerous to leave the lane because your ADC could die. And it's dangerous to go invade the enemy jungle, right? So it's like, if you're ahead and you can go get all the stacks or you're a able to leverage, um, that roam where you're picking up the stacks but you're also roaming and making a play mid lane or something like that or helping your jungler invade like all of those are great scenarios but it's very very contingent right it's not consistent what happens if you're behind if you're constantly just sitting in your tower all game and if you go roam you're going to lose a lot of experience or they're going to dive your 80 carry or something like that or you just your mid lane is just getting completely clapped and there's no way you can make a gank mid um it, it just seems like he's a very just odd champion in that sense so what they're changing here is they're really just doubling down on what they want him to be doing that's different which is roaming around so at a combat movement speed he can get up to 10 stacks of the chimes so usually there's not that many chimes on the board but i guess if you allow there to be a bunch over time i think you get two at a time every like minute or something that will pop up the stack duration 20 seconds now that's pretty big that the stack lasts for 20 seconds now you really do have time to get from one chime to another and you can even stop off and ward or um maybe even try to get a gank if there's a chime close to it and then keep the stack going w now uses an ammo max two and it takes longer okay so in team fights now because usually how this gets used in a lot of fights that's the heal is where you just put the shrine right on somebody and give them a little burst of speed and healing on a really long cooldown so yeah you can like place them around like a siege situation or like for sustain and lane which is cool the sustain and lane is good but like almost nobody sieges anymore like everybody it's either just going to be a hard line dive or you've got baron and you just run over the tower anyways like there's very very few scenarios where teams are just sitting there sieging like five on five so there's just too much wave clear in the game it's just not going to be a productive use of time most of the time um so anyways this is a little bit better now you can do it twice in a fight presumably and give out some of this bonus um bonus speed and the charge time is from 10 seconds to five five is still like an eternity to get the max heal off of something so that's fine, but I don't think that's going to change how this gets used in fights. I guess if you're like setting up around a dragon or a baron, um, you can set some of these shrines up so that your teammates, you know, can touch a mid fight potentially. So there is that. The movement speed is 30 seconds. Um, okay, it was 30 decaying over 1.5. Now it's 20 to 30. So it's even slower now than it was. 
with some scaling. I feel like it's just not enough. You know, I had him in tier two, but after really reading here and thinking about it, I think it's still going to be niche. I think he'll be a little bit better than he was, but um, <clears throat> I just don't think it's it's enough. You know, they, they need to make him more compatible with more items, or they need to, like, unlock more bonuses. Kind of like what they do with Thresh's Souls affects all sorts of aspects of his kit. Um, giving him the extra armor and increasing, you know, the shield on his W. This needs to give him, like, permanent movement speed or something when he gets to certain things or give him survivability give him some extra armor or magic resist um depending on the souls or the uh chimes it does give him more damage on his attacks and it does give splash damage and slow so it does do some stuff but i, I think it needs to either give him more survivability or more movement um so then he doesn't have to get as many like goofy items like dead man's which is just so awkward on him because it doesn't have the, like the cooldown reduction um Anyways, so Bard can still be good on people that really play a lot of Bard and leverage those roams well, but it's still sort of a, a very niche pick. Okay, Stormraiser's going up, Shoujin's going up, or going down a little bit, so this will help Stormraiser users. I don't think there are that many champs in bot lane that like to get Stormraiser a lot, maybe like Caitlyn or something. Um, there are a few, but uh, I don't think it's going to impact the meta bot lane too much. This will make Bruisers, Jarvan, Kane, you know, stuff like that a little bit weaker with the Spear of Shojin, but I think I think they'll still be good. And then Crown the Shattered Queen, um, now Burst is going to be even better against those champions because it's only blocking 40% of the damage for two and a half seconds. Um, so, yeah, and, and it's giving an extra 15 AP, but it was giving up to 40 if you weren't touched. So if you were a, like a serious backliner like an Azir or something that sometimes may not get touched for a while, <clears throat> you were getting a lot of damage off that item. But now they, you know, a lot of champions can burst through 40%. Now, yes, it does last a little bit longer, but most of the time when someone engages and just like rolls their hand across the keyboard on you, then, um, <clears throat> you know, that's going to be one second or less. So... You know, I think it's a huge hit that you're taking 35% more damage now over that window, that burst window. Whereas before, I mean, I guess certain champs could go in, use an ability, wait on this to fall off, and then go after you. But I've, I, I just feel like this is going to be weaker. Like, you can, especially if a team is involved, if you catch a champion out like that and everyone just blows them up immediately. Um, I think this is going to be a lot less protection. And then Static Shiv... A little bit more AD, and then minion energize, so doing less damage to minions, quite a bit less, um, is probably going to be good overall for the game. Zaya's getting nerfed. I mean, that'll like indirectly hit Rakan a little bit, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think Rakan's great with other champions too. Honestly, don't even think Zaya is that like overwhelmingly strong. I'm not sure if she's just like running over pro right now or what. Uh, yeah, okay. She's extremely good in pro, so I, I see it. I see why they would... I mean, that's like that's not like insane. 59% win rate, but 91% presence is pretty crazy. I mean, she's pick banned every game. Kaisa's also pick banned a lot, but she only has a 44% win rate. So yeah, it really is just kind of the Zaya show. So that's fair. Okay, let's talk about the tier list itself here. I just wanted to do a little bit of kind of setup. Um sort of update you guys on what's going on okay so i think rakan is still um extremely good as usual kind of surprise of nobody however he is getting picked all the time now i think he's like the second or third most picked um support which obviously i hate to see as rakan one trick because everyone's finally recognizing he's super strong he's really good and it's like guys he's been this good for a long time like they did make some adjustments the adjustments to the Q like six patches ago or something that was obviously really good um and the main reason why that was good if you remember what that was basically they lowered the mana cost on his early q by like 20 from 60 to 40 they increased the heal on it by like 10 at all levels something like that and i think they increased or they decreased the cooldown um by a little bit as well but that has basically made Rakan like one of the best engaged, sustained champions um, in the game. Alistar is pretty good too, which is why Alistar is picked.
But he can nullify so much early game poke just by hitting those cues because it heals him and his ally for a pretty good amount. And that's always been kind of the thing with Rakan is in the past you can pressure him early and he's not going to be the best in the early game. He has really long cooldowns and his base damage is not that high in the early game. But if he gets to mid and late game, you know, he's just so flexible in how he can engage. It's almost impossible to get away from him, you know, for most champions because he comes in really fast. If you're, you know, proficient on him, you can dodge a lot of skill shots either by strafing or by using your E to gap close. He can just close so much distance so fast because you can do the, the R to run into a fight or run into a situation to catch up if you're behind. E onto somebody, and you can even E onto somebody else. So that's two 600 unit dashes, and then you can W, which is like a 700 unit dash. So, you know, you can close almost 2,000 units, you know, in like a second and get on top of somebody. And that's part of what makes him the best engaged, and he just runs through people. You don't have to have a clean angle to get a hook. Um, and it's a pretty fast animation compared to a lot of um, a lot of the hooks out there, outside of like Blitzcrank or something, right? Like Thresh has that wind-up animation. You know, Nautilus has a little animation too. Um, so he's really, really good at engaging. Also, his itemization is very flexible and very unique uh, in that he can get something like a Shirelius to help your whole team come in and catch, you know, catch people out and have really strong rotations. And things like that whereas other tanks can't comfortably get Shirelius as much because they're gonna get blown up because if you're positioning well with Rakan then you shouldn't have to buy that many tanky items now usually he'll get something like a Knight's Vow or a Zeke second but in theory you know you could get other flexible items you could get something like a redemption if you wanted to to help out with kind of team fights he does have a lot of shielding and healing in his kit so or a decent amount so you know that's just on the table if he wants it right um so super flexible really good engage also extremely safe right if you play him correctly it's so hard to gank a recon lane so he can play weak side really well right if your jungler just wants to focus on top lane and you're just getting camped bottom lane he can deal with that better than almost any other support because again you have so much mobility um to get out of situations versus if it's like nautilus or leona or something like that it's going to be a lot harder to get out. Now, Nautilus can, with his hook, kind of escape from some things, but it's going to be a lot more conditional than Rakan. Like, they can body block that. Um, you know, they can pull you out of your hook if they time it right. So, you know, they can do that with Rakan too, but I still think he's one of the safest. So he's very poke resistant. He can sustain through a lot of harassment early. He's very resistant to ganks. He scales extremely well into the mid and late game because of his unique itemization. Um, has really strong shields as well so he's one of the best like anti-burst champions at peeling your allies so if you have like a Zed or something trying to go after your ADC you've got the shield on your E you have Guardian um, you can take things like Knight's Vow if you want you could even take Locket if you wanted to go super extreme I don't recommend that most of the time but you have so many tools to help you deal with divers as well so great on offense great on defense very doable early game not amazing early game but he can definitely survive it and you can make plays off of it he still has cc once you get a few points in your w he still can do decent damage especially if your ignites up like you can secure kills um, and he's really good at warding because he's got that free dash over walls with the w you can afford to get deep wards in their jungle where like nautilus leona thresh they can't walk that deep because if they get caught out they're gonna die right if they're off sides rakan can go off sides a little bit and get away with it a lot of the time so he's just, you know, almost like a cheat code in a lot of situations. He can violate things that a lot of other supports can't do um, because of that mobility. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that that makes him the number one overall support in my mind right now, just because of that flexibility, if you're good on him. Um, and, yeah, he's getting picked a lot. His win rate's pretty high. He's getting picked a lot in pro. His win rate's really high. So a lot of people have finally woken up to just how strong Rakan is. Now, the downside to him... Obviously, he has long cooldowns that we mentioned earlier, and um, if you get CC'd, you're in trouble. Now, you can get Merc Treads, and that helps a lot in a lot of matchups, but he's not tanky. So if you're against a team that has a lot of CC and locks you down, then you can die a lot faster than someone like Nautilus or Leona is going to. So if they get a hold of you, it's a problem. But if you're playing well, 
they're probably not going to be able to get a hold of you that much. So that's just kind of where the skill comes in is just understanding what the cooldowns are, what you need to be looking out for in fights, and just making sure you're not getting hit by things like blitz hooks or just chain CC'd by Nautilus or Leona or whatever. Um, you got to be a lot more cautious with him. But if played well, you know, highly effective. Okay, the other one that I think is also S tier on this patch is Rel, and Rel had a bunch of changes. I don't know if I've done a tier list since those changes um, when she got that minor rework three or four patches ago. Um, but I think she's pretty good. She was nerfed a few patches ago. The main thing with Rel is she has a lot of CC, so she's got that Q now, which has that little mini stun on it, which is very good against Rakan. That's another thing in general with Rakan is his engage can also get interrupted very easily. So anyone that has a displacement can knock him out of that, out of his W, which is very frustrating versus something like a hook champion, you know, a, a Nautilus, a Blitzcrank or whatever. If their hook hits, it hits and there's not a lot people can do about it other than like body block it for you um, or dodge it. So, you know, it's easier to land the Rakan thing if you're not disrupted. But again, it's easier to disrupt Rakan if you're, you know, good at hitting your CC on him. It's easier to disrupt him than some of the other champs out there. So she's got this stun on her Q, which is pretty good. It also does break shields. So, um, you know, shield bow is not really meta. You're not seeing that as much anymore or sterics. But if you do happen to see those items, breaking those shields can be a big deal. Obviously, specific champions are, um, you know, can get some pretty big shields. And if they have an enchanter, you know, that type of thing that gives shields, that's going to be uh, pretty good too. So if the enemy's getting Locket, or they've got Janna, or Lulu, or whatever, it's pretty good. Great matchup into Rakan because you have this that's like a stun that can knock him out of his W, and it's going to break his passive shield. And it's going to break his Guardian and his E if he tries to shield allies with that as well. So very good matchup in Rakan for that reason. She's really fast when she's in horse mode. You can rotate really well um, from, you know, lane to lane or out warding or whatever. Now, jumping over the wall, if you're in horse mode, you can do it. There are very slender walls you can jump over, but she can do that. You are slow after you crash down. But kind of like Rakan, that does allow you to go get some... Um, you know, deeper wards in enemy jungle. You could even speed yourself up, I think, with the E, even if there's not anyone else around, um, to potentially get away from people. So she's quick. She can get those deep wards. She's got pretty decent survivability if you learn how to play her correctly and use that crash down to get those big shields. It's good. Um, the R obviously can pull people, especially people that don't have a lot of escapes, dashes, flashes, things like that. Does a lot of damage, pulls people together. And there are a lot of different combos you can do with her, whether you go in with the horse, knock them backward, you know, ult them, and then stun them with the Q, or you stun them with the Q first, then you go for the crash down with the W. There's a lot of different combinations, and you have to understand what's optimal to do in different situations. And it requires some prep. Like, you gotta know, okay, do I need to be in horse mode when I'm gonna go for this engage, or am I gonna go for the crash down? The crash down is very easy for a lot of champs to outplay because you can knock her out of it, sort of like Rakan. If you have a displacement, you can also just dodge it. It's very telegraphed. So if you you know have any kind of dash or flash to the side, you can get away from it. So it is tricky. You have to play her a lot to figure out how to optimize these things in different situations, but you have the tools to deal with a lot of different things. So she's got the tankiness. She has the CC. She's got the utility. You know, with the shield breaking, um, you just have to play her correctly. But I think if you are doing that, then she can be very strong. She's also a very good flex pick, especially in pro. So that's not solo queue, but in general, people may not immediately know if you're going to be in the jungle or if you're going to be in the bot lane if you're an early pick and you pick her. So that does have some value, not as much as it does in pro, but especially in higher level solo queue, that is going to add a little bit of extra value um, to her because uh, the enemy may just not fully understand the matchups and may not be able to counterpick certain things as well. So overall, pretty strong champion. Um, lots of versatility to her. Has been nerfed a little bit over time, but still going to be strong if you're good on her. Okay, Thresh is another one. We just talked about him and sort of the thing here. And I think he was... Um, 
He was buffed before, like some minor stuff, two or three patches ago. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I am starting to see him a bit more recently. And he is also like a decent matchup into Rakan. I know that um, I've, I've heard Aphromu say that it's like an unplayable matchup, that he thinks Rakan just like hard dominates the Thresh. And in the past, you know, as a Rakan one trick, I have done pretty well into Thresh, but this season it has been a little bit tougher. Um, and I can't exactly put my finger on it. Obviously, you know, the main interaction is, does he flay you out of the W or not, right? If you go in with your W, is he fast enough on the flay to push you back before you land the W on somebody? And if he can do that, then it's going to be a tough day, if you're a con. If he's slow on that, because if you start your upward momentum off of your W and then he flays you, it's too late. You're already going to get the knockup. Um... But if he does it early enough, then it completely stuffs your engage. So that's a problem. Obviously, if he lands the hook on you, um, he can also stop your engage with that. And you can kind of get away if he lands the hook on you sometimes. That's another interaction, right? If he lands that hook and he waits with the flay until you try to jump away, then he flays you, that's potentially a problem. Now, if an ally is close enough to you and you use an E to try to escape, you can just use a second E to probably get out. So you have like three dashes as Rakan. So it, it, it's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I think it is a skill matchup a lot of the time. Um, but if like Thresh tries to go into like onto an ally or sometimes into you, you can just flip the table on him and kill him, right? If you end up, you know, he doesn't, or the ADC doesn't follow up immediately or they just don't have enough damage then you just are, you know, knock him up with your W and then hit him with your Q and then E back to your ally and then maybe you took 25% of your health but now he's just sitting there defenseless with no abilities and, you know, your ADC just blasts him and Thresh is a lot squishier than he seems, especially in the early game, particularly when the Aftershock falls off or if he goes um, Glacial Augment or something. Um, you know, maybe you take 25% of your health on that but maybe he takes... 50 or 75 percent of his health so it's a very it's a very fun matchup it's an interesting matchup um and in general thresh is pretty good against other like diver types of champs historically he's had a problem against poke because um he just doesn't have any sustain in his kit so yeah there hasn't been that much um on 13 7 the cooldown refund was two seconds from three so that was actually a nerf um, they increased the damage on the Q a while ago and they increased the baseline cooldown on the Q so those are both buffed and then um, the base damage on Flay was increased by quite a lot by 20 damage and the AP ratio was increased so <clears throat> Yeah, so they gave him quite a few of these little subtle buffs, and then they gave him a little bit of a nerf here on the Q. Um, so it's been kind of back and forth, but I have been seeing him a lot more, and I do think that he's worthy potentially of the tier two. If you're really good on him, you could get him, you know, in tier one. But uh, I think he's good because he does have like a good matchup. I think he should have a good matchup in a rel. You can flay her back out of her, um, you know, her crash down. And you can also just cure if she tries to run at you. Um, so I feel like that's an okay matchup. It may not be amazing. But I feel like it's playable. The Rakan matchup's playable. Blitz matchup is horrible. You don't want to see that because Blitz, like, if it, you're so squishy, if he lands that hook on you, you're dead. And his hook is faster than yours. So you self-stun to try to throw your hook for, like, half a second. If he sees that and he's in range, and he, he can just hook you automatically. Even if you hook him and he hooks you he's going to win that because um, he's going to pull you completely out of position and then he's going to knock you up and like bust your shield um, if you try to use your W on yourself or something. So it's just, it's a really, really bad matchup. I think his matchup, matchup into Leona historically is very good. Nautilus is a little more iffy. Um, I think Nautilus is probably favored in that because he's just a lot more consistent. It's easier to hit his hook. His R is automatically going to hit and you're on the squishy side. Um, but he's also phenomenal at playing weak side, like I talked about with Rakan too, is because you can throw that lantern out. You can play pretty far back if you think you're getting camped, 
and you can lantern your ADC um, to safety. So very flexible, strong engage um, with the Q and the follow up if you want it. Really good disengage with the uh, with the flay, with the lantern, with the R. So historically, a lot of people would consider him the best design support of all time. Lots of different interaction with all of his skills. Um, he's great. You know, the the main like issue with him is that he's squishy early on, and um, he, he doesn't really have a lot of good backline access. So he just has to throw this hook, and usually you're just hitting frontliners unless you're catching them out of the brush and they're not paying attention or whatever. So if they have, like, super tanky boys up front um, landing hooks on them, it's not going to, like, hooking the Sejuani or something is not going to do a lot for your team most of the time versus, you know, Rakan can dash, get to that back line and disrupt. Rel, um, to some extent, can get to the back line. And then Blitz just pulls people so far out of position over walls or whatever that even if they are tanky, sometimes you can kill them anyways. Nautilus has his R, you know, to go through everybody, hit the back line. Leona can hit the back line with her R. So it feels like most other engaged champs just have better ways of disrupting the mages and the ADCs um, versus Thresh is uh, a little bit more of a disruptor more so than like a diver or like a hard cc champ um in the team fights so can be very good <clears throat> but you know if they have a super fed back line and you can't get to them that's going to be a problem okay blitzcrank um not a lot has changed with him I, th I think they may have like swapped around a couple of numbers with him but it's the same old thing that has been since season one right you just you land your hook you feel like a god you kill everybody you don't land your hook then you're worthless for x number of seconds so he's a very, very binary champion. It's hit hook, really good. Don't hit hook, worthless. <laughs> so, you know, take, take that for what it is. Obviously, he loves if there's squishier, immobile things that are out there. I have seen people playing, like, more AP champs, especially you see a lot of, like, Xerath, Luxes, that type of stuff. He is very vulnerable to poke because he doesn't have any sustain in lane, but if he actually lands a hook on those people, then it's going to be a big problem. So, And a lot of people are not running Gale Force anymore. There's some Gale Force users, but that was a major problem for Blitzcrank because then they get to, you know, a free flash, free get-out-of-jail card, and that's, that's his whole kit, right? So yeah, they can, like, you know, Gale Force out of a Nautilus hook or a Thresh hook or whatever, but those champs at least still have other stuff they can do. If Blitz doesn't have his hook, then it's kind of worthless. So, he, it's just, he kind of is more matchup dependent. You do want the squishier chance, you want the immobile chance, but you can completely take over games with Blitzcrank. You get ahead, where you just have really good roams with mobility boots. He's one of the most devastating roamers in the game. Um, you just start to fall off potentially late game if they're able to force you know team fights on you then you just don't do a lot right but at the same time if it's late game and you just get that one key hook right you catch the soraka trying to ward you hook her over a wall at 35 minutes kill her and then you're able to force a 4v5 or you get a baron off of it or something you know you can just win the game on the spot so you know very interesting, really extreme champ. So if you can leverage his strengths, he's amazing. Um, if you sometimes miss those hooks, or they just have a lot of things that are going to be good against the hooks, um, he kind of falls off. Then we have Nautilus, the old staple. Uh, if you're good on Nautilus, I mean, he has almost the perfect kit for a support. right? You've got your R, which can knock up a bunch of different people and is pretty much guaranteed to hit your target unless they have something that makes them go untargetable. Um, and it's all knockups as well, so that's not affected by Mercury Treads or anything else. And that's what really gives him a big edge over something like, you know, a Leona or a Thresh potentially, is they're going to be heavily impacted if the enemy team has either the green jungle item or Mercury Treads or just something else that reduces CC. You know, their effectiveness can fall off pretty hard. But Nautilus, you know, Mercury Treads not going to do a lot. Because his R is a knockup, his hook is a displacement, which is basically like airborne, so it's not going to do a lot to reduce there. His passive hitting people is such a short duration anyways that that's not going to matter. Um, <clears throat> so really, really good at engaging. Probably the best open field, because you've got the R for guaranteed, and his hook, 
is virtually guaranteed. It's a huge hook, like the biggest hitbox and a really fast animation to get it out there. Now, the problem, though, is he can't hook over walls, so you can't get a lot of the same kind of sneaky engages where you can play around your vision, you know, like going over the river walls, going over barren walls, things like that, that like a Blitzcrank, Thresh, or Nautilus can do. But you can escape with that too. So that does make him a little bit better at playing something like Weak Side where you're getting camped than like a Leona. Um, his damage is kind of low compared to some of these other champs. It has been nerfed over time. Um, you can do Emax. It helps out with that a little bit, but then your Q is going to be on a much longer cooldown. So it's not as much damage and uh, his tankiness is kind of wimpy compared to the big tanks like Alistar, Braum, Leona. Um... It's just like kind of a weak little shield that doesn't scale very well at all um, off of the W. So he is squishier, um, but it's very, very good, high impact, high quality CC that you get off of him. So I still think Nautilus is going to be quite strong. I don't know in pro, I assume he's still played quite a bit, but I don't know his win rate. It's like 44, so it's, it's not phenomenal, not phenomenal, uh, but he's still getting played a lot. Okay, and then last view here, and then we'll, we'll call it an episode. I don't want to go too far over like 45 minutes. Um, Leona, not all, oh, one thing I will say that has changed uh, in the last few patches about some of these engaged champs is even Shroud got nerfed last patch. So instead of being 10% uh, reduction on everything, it's now only 7%. So people were kind of tripping out about that, but th that is pretty significant. And that does hurt a lot of these tanks. Um, and I think that Glacial Augment was also nerfed. I don't remember if that was just for range or if that was like for everybody. 20% uh, baseline. Didn't it used to be 30 or 25? So those are two things that have like nerfed the tanks a little bit. Uh, the Glacial Augment nerf and then the uh, Even Shroud nerf. So... It, it, that, that is going to hurt your damage output. It doesn't hurt your CC a lot, but, you know, in a team fight where there's five people hitting this person you engaged on, it certainly does add up over time. So that is something to keep in mind. I still think engaged champs are probably the place to be because they hit the enchanters even harder when they nerf stuff like Ardent Sensor um, a few patches ago. But Leona, like, the Even Shroud really was great on Leona because she's probably one of the more aggressive, like, all in. Um, focused champions who has like pretty high damage especially early on for an engaged champ uh, but she has no escapes and virtually no utility it's just straight up I'm very tanky one of the tankiest supports in the early game with aftershock plus your W and kind of how they scale off of each other but you have no escapes very very strong engaged because everything she does goes through minions and goes through other players so you can just like pull straight to that back line with the E. You can use the W to engage on people from the back line. And it's a lot of CC. Again, Mercury Treads is going to be incredibly effective against her because everything she has is a stun. There's no airborne. Um, but if they don't get Mercury Treads, if it's an ADC or something like that, uh, then you can just completely blow them up. And so it's just really, really hard to get away from her. So if she gets ahead in lane with an extremely dangerous lane partner, something like a Tristana or a Draven, a Jin, something that can just like blast people that's going to get like a Serrated Dirk or something early, she can be a big problem. Great roaming potential. The cooldown on her R is really low compared to most other engages. It's 90 seconds at level 1. Um, so lots and lots of opportunities to make these engages be aggressive, kill people. Now on the flip side, you know, like I said, no escapes, right? So she can't hook walls, she can't W out, she has nothing in her kit that speeds her up personally. So if you get camped, she's gonna be a really bad weak side champion. If you're just constantly getting camped, you're probably dying all the time. And it's very easy to bait her. So, you know, if you can just convince her to go into a fight and then the jungler shows up, you're dead, <laughs> basically. She's very good at diving, though, too. So to kind of put in that aggression early, you know, when you have Aftershock and that W, you get a ton of armor in the early game. So if you can push them in and you get ahead and you have a good dive opportunity, um, she's probably second only to maybe like Alistar 
of like mainstream supports for diving and that's when Alistar hit six of course um, so yeah gonna be very strong also somewhat uh, weak to poke if you can't hard engage into him but it's just like a Zerath and he's just constantly hitting you with his R's or Jens just constantly like bouncing grenades on you and things like that it can be really hard to sustain through that poke but very very good if you have an aggressive ADC and you just want to go all out and just take over the game um, with offense very good choice for that okay uh, Braum is another one that I'll just bump up here he has been seeing a little bit more play in pro um, really high win rate not an amazing pick rate but in the situations where you pick him he is pretty good I don't think they buffed him um, specifically they may have a little bit like so ba Braum's big problem is he doesn't have a lot of like guaranteed like fast CC Right, he's really good at slower engagements, those five on five fights where people are landing multiple auto attacks on multiple people, um, and you get a lot of value out of your passive where you're getting a ton of stuns. But if it's a really fast fight, um, you know, he's not going to be as strong at that. Yeah, so he hasn't really been buffed um, in quite a while. Um, but he does offer that protection, especially if they have a lot of ranged champions. Obviously, you're getting a lot of value out of that shield. Uh, there aren't a lot of champs in the meta like he was used to stuff Orn really hard back in the day when Orn was meta because you can block his whole little Orn horn and you can use your R to CC him from a really long distance if he's standing still um, good at like blocking a misfortune ultimate good at blocking twitch because it stuffs um, his ultimate doesn't go through your shield so anything that really relies on that those types of matchups he's going to be good um if the enemy team has a lot of melees, he's going to be good. Because, again, you can sort of get those stuns on people. And he does have really nice mobility. So if you're like, jump, you can jump back with your W to allies. So it's kind of like, sort of like a Rakan E. So it's like not as much mobility as something like Rakan. But at least he can sort of move around um, in fights around your allies. So he's pretty good if you just need to protect your back line the problem is sort of like thresh he's has virtually no access to their back line so it's really hard to disrupt if they have you know really fed mages or 80 carries uh, but he's pretty good at protecting your 80 carries from ranged units he does have a problem if they have a lot of divers that just completely ignore his shield so like rakan who can just run through him and w um so it doesn't count as a projectile obviously when he w's um, so you have like no answer to Rakan. Um, Rel can be tricky. I don't remember. I don't think his shield blocks Nautilus R. I'm not 100% about that because it's like underground. Um, so anyways, like he, he's situational, but I decided to put him in great just because he is getting played more in pro to good effect. And he has like a pretty good win in soul queue. And he is very good on those long team fight, you know, beefy person versus beefy person matchup so if the enemy team like has Alistar, Sejuani, you know that type of thing he's going to be pretty good into that type of stuff long fights where you get like get to shield a couple of times and your passive is just really procking on everybody that's what you want to see with Braum obviously with things that can like tap multiple auto attacks Lucian classically um, is going to be really good with Braum but really you can put him with almost anybody if you're just trying to you know peel and protect and then we've got uh, Maokai. I think is still pretty good. He has received several nerfs, but he's just kind of a unique support in that he provides really good vision control with his E. Doesn't do as much damage as it used to, but still pretty solid. Um, and then you just have like that point click with the W where people can't dance around you. If you get in a range, that's, that's the challenge. You have to be within 500 units. But if you get in a range where you like flash on top of them in W, you're gonna hit them. They can't dodge it. Like there, there's no escape. It's kind of like uh, Nautilus's R. Now you have to be careful with that because if they dash and flash over a wall or they pull you back in the tower or something like that, that's gonna be a problem. So you gotta be careful with it. But it is a very nice, very reliable piece of CC if you get in a range. And then the Q is just all around an okay ability. It does pretty high damage for a support baseline. It does have that slow. And it has a knockback. Now, it's only when something is very close to you that it does the knockback. It's not the entire projectile um, 
it, it doesn't affect the entire range of the projectile. But if you do that, if your timing is extremely on point, it's very similar to a thrush play. So you can like disrupt a Rakan who's trying to go in with his W. You can knock him out of that. You can knock Leona out of her engage. You can knock Thresh out of his engage. So again, the timing is kind of crazy. Like you really have to play him a lot to get that, but it is there. It is an option um, for a high level Maokai if you can be close to that. If you can be close enough to the target and pull it off. And then of course his R is just like one of the best pieces of CC in the game. It's huge you know huge hitbox now yes if they're organized if they're all on comps it's professional everybody can line up and the tank be in front and just like face tank one of the you know brambles but even in pro play that doesn't happen most of the time um it's extremely disruptive and extremely difficult to get around so ton of cc he's got some sustain with his passive really good vision control really reliable you know his r and his w is a high probability you're going to get good effects out of those in fights you know his big downside is one his short range so it's kind of hard to get on the back line unless you use flash um he doesn't have as many defensive tools as a lot of other tanks so you are going to be squishier unless you you know devote a lot of resources into building tanky stuff on him um and that's pretty much it you know just like squishier short range and in lane he kind of like doesn't have a lot of threat like his e doesn't do a lot his q doesn't do a lot early levels so people can if they want to try to bully you out so the laning phase is really one of his weakest phases but after he gets out of that he's pretty effective you do have an ap option which has been nerfed but if you want to try to go like demonic mask or something like you can do a little bit more ap with your seeds later on although again that build has been nerfed pretty heavily so i think most people are going tanky on him um but the AP is on the option if you're really just kind of hurting for damage. Um, and then we have Alistar. So Alistar is getting played a lot more in pro. As you can see, he's the most picked pro support and 49% um, win rate. Now, I think the main reason for this is he is extremely good against Rel, who is um, very popular both in the jungle and as support right now. The main reason is just point click W. If she tries to do crash down or whatever, you just headbutt her out. Pretty good against Rakan if you do that too. If he's trying to go in with his W, you can headbutt him out. So it's a very good point click displacement. Your timing doesn't have to be as on point as like Thresh with his play or Maokai with his Q. You just point click W if you're close to him. It's boom. You just knock him out. And then of course you have your Q. Um, which is also a knockup, so none of that is affected by Mercury Treads. It's not a lot of CC, but um, it is some. And then, of course, you have your E, which can be a pretty decent little stun, pretty decent little damage um, early on. You know, the big thing, especially in pro why he's picked a lot, is his ultimate. You know, he's just like the perfect diver because it does reduce tower damage. So you can just sit there and tank like five tower shots early on. Um, and... Yeah, if you're good at managing waves and stacking it up and timing it with the jungle and you run down for those early um, early dives, he's going to be great at that. So I think that's you know one of the big reasons. He is resilient to poke too because he does heal up you and your ally for every like seven minions that die or something. Um, so really tanky, great disruptor, can dive the back line, can peel pretty well, uh, pretty long cooldowns, and I would say like, limited ability to affect multiple targets so like your q can knock up a lot of targets if they're all clumped up so there is that um i guess his closest comparison might be something like recon because they're both just trying to go in there and like knock somebody up instantly the major difference is recon can get out so like recon can e back out that's another thing i didn't mention with him compared to other tanks recon can go in cc and then get back out so if the situation looks bad um, your team's not following up, no problem, get out. Versus with if they're close enough to help you get out. Um, with everybody else, you go in, you're in with most people, except for the long range hookers, right? That sounded kind of weird, but like with Blitzcrank and Thresh, um, you don't have to commit if you don't want to. But like with your Leona, your Nautilus, your Alistar, your Maokai, a lot of times if you're going in, you're in. Um, you can't escape. And you're just going to get hit by everything. With Rakan, you can get out. You're not going to get hit. Now, Alistar may not care. If he ults, he doesn't care if he gets hit by all the collateral damage, you know, all the AoE, CC stuff that's going on in a team fight. Um, Alistar may not care as much. So, 
Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I could definitely see him being higher, especially in professional play. Maybe he is up in S tier A. I think a lot of people don't utilize his strengths well enough, and they just use him as just like a minor engaged champ, and I just feel like they're better chance for that if you're just randomly looking for fights. It's specifically because of that dive potential and like early fights and the power that are. I think that make him good. But if you're really good on Alistar, I, I think he definitely can be um, really strong right now. The items don't matter, so you can just get kind of whatever you want. He probably could get a Shrelia's. Um I suspect he might still just do even Shroud. Um, but because survivability is not like as big of a deal. <clears throat> yeah, it's just even Shroud. And he likes mobility boots. He's one of the best roaming champions too because it's just point click. You know, a lot of times they have to have a dash or they're dead. You can't miss a skill shot. They can't outplay it just by stepping to the side or something like they can with a hook. Yeah. So even Shroud, you can also do um, Radiant Virtue if you want to. So there, there are a few different choices in there. But um, yeah, just kind of tanky standard setup. Okay. Anyways, um, that's going to be it for this video. I do have to move on and do some other things. Um, Bard, I know people might want to talk about that. I know we talked about that a little bit on the Twitter. I just don't think it's going to be quite enough. I don't think it fixes a lot of his problems. But it is going to make him, I think, to where he can roam around and maybe get more chimes. Maybe that's enough to push him over the edge. Um, it'll probably still be like Dead Man's, which is kind of a bad item right now in general. Um like Locket Dead Man's is probably what he has to go. So the items still kind of suck on him. The rune's still pretty bad. But if you get enough chimes and you're able to roam around and make plays, he is one of the coolest champs, I think, in the game. Like that R has so many different applications. That's uh, a pro and a con, is that it's not really straightforward what you're always supposed to do with that R, but you can do so many cool, unique, and interesting things with it. Like, you know, defend your team from a Karthus ult if they all gather around or like stop um rift herald from charging a tower if you stasis the tower so there's a lot of cool things you can do with him i just don't think it's quite going to be enough then we have most of the enchanters um you know kind of mixed in here i think if you have the right kind of like hard scaling adc you know like an aphelios maybe a jinx these can be pretty good i think that the way the itemization is and the way the game is kind of balanced right now that you know tanks are overall stronger for support but i think especially the lower the elo gets the better enchanters are because people are not going to close out games that's going to allow you to get more items enchanters scale a lot harder with plus healing and shielding and ap tanks usually don't have great scaling with items like they get tankier but they don't buff your allies as much as things like enchanters can so if the game drags on to 40 minutes, yeah, Soraka is going to be much higher impact, in my opinion, most of the time than something like a Thresh is going to be at that point in the game. It's just a question of can you survive long enough to get there? Um, and do you have the, um, the ADC to go with it, right? If you've got like Ezreal um, Janna or Ezreal Yumi or Ezreal Lulu, that's not going to do a lot. But if you've got like Kog'Maw Lulu, Kog'Maw who's got three or four items, right? Or Aphelios who's got three or four items or Jinx, then these champions get a lot better. So I just think they're a little bit more reliant on very specific team comps to work. But they are very, very strong in, you know, kind of their different ways. If they scale, if they get enough time to do their thing, I think they can be really good if they don't get blown out early. Um... And that's pretty much it for the newer things. Down here in Niche, these aren't necessarily bad. I think they would be bad for most people. But if you practice on them and you have the right kind of scenario, I have seen Ivern support do all right um, in the bot lane. Is he better than, like, you know, some of these other supports? I'm not entirely sure. But he does have some unique interactions with the brush and things like that. Lissandra, I've tried to make that work in the past. I think there were recently some pro games where people play that as support. She does have a lot of CC, but she's just really close range, and the items and runes are kind of awkward on her, but it can work. And then Dinger is another like pretty good um, support if you just want to like push in and pressure under tower. Uh, I do think that something like a Lux is probably going to be better at that. Um or maybe Zerath, but I think Lux is really the premier if you're just trying to push in and poke and pressure under tower. I think she's going to be one of your better options, or even something like a Zyra um, might be better. But if you land those stun grenades with Heimer, he can one-shot you, right, with that ultimate and the R. 
Um, and I'll go ahead and put Melee up here too. I think Melee is still like okay. Um, but anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Uh, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Have you seen some supports really popping off with some new builds that could be interesting? Um, and don't forget to come check out the stream most nights, usually around 11 p.m., 11.30, going till about 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that's it. Have a good day, and we'll see you everybody next time.